Hey guys, Excalibur here, and today I am not taking a look at Game of Thrones for Telltale Games. I am not doing that. Sorry if I put it that way, it seems that way, but I want to talk about what happened last night with Game of Thrones Season 5 finale, and I figured the best way to have a background is by showing Game of Thrones. So let me just go out here, this looks better. So I'm not going to be playing this, I'm just going to talk about how I felt about Game of Thrones Season 5. There will be spoilers, so for people who haven't seen the season yet, or haven't seen the episode yet, please do not watch this. Uh, wait until you see it first, and then you'll have my overall thoughts on it. Before I go spoiler, uh, spoiler, you know, towards, I'll say this. The episode is fantastic. It it surprises you in a, on a quite a few notes, and the ending, oh my god, the ending, it will bring you to tears. I mean, it almost brought me to tears, it was that bad. But, uh, I won't go into that much for now. Okay, now this is officially spoiler-filled, so please stop watching now. Alright, so last episode, you know, the one before this one, there was the top, there's, you know, this infamous scene of Stannis Baratheon ending up, you know, putting his daughter to death, and that was just so hard to watch. I was thinking, what more could they do, like, with Stannis now, since he's on the march to save Winter, I mean, save Winterfell, pretty much from hit from uh, the Lannister's wrath and that he wants to take over but half his army is gone and you know it was such a harsh judgment for him to do that to his daughter I mean everybody liked her a lot and the fact that she's gone so quickly and so out of nowhere it just really upset me it upset a lot of people I'm sure and of course there's the dragons the dragon Drago that comes out at the end of episode 9 god that was intense that was so unexpected I'm so glad they went back to that because you know, Drago is such an important character because he's so unknown, and especially in this game, where because in episode four it takes a lot of approach about Drago, and like where he is and what he's doing and whatnot. So that's nice to hear. And uh, about season, about episode ten, man, it's just like there's it's a mixture between the aftermath of what just happened and a the a huge events, huge events that actually happen as of now, and it's so satisfying. In a way, it's also so heartbreaking. It's a consistent pace of just like sadness, excitement, sadness, excitement. There were so many. Man, this is one of the best episodes because I was constantly on my freaking edge of my seat. I did not know what to say or you know, what to think, really. So I'll start off with uh, the aftermath of the mar uh, Marine and that travesty that was the games. In the aftermath, it ends up with Tyrion taking temporary control of the of the city because he's the only one who actually has political experience and you know I'm really glad about that because he deserves a good spot on the you know spotlight. He's been downtrodden so much lately, but I I'm afraid that since he's a dwarf and that he's not Dothraki or he's not like you know of that nature of that uh, nature that ethnicity in the city that it's in. I'm afraid that it might not end well for him, but hopefully he'll have some backup, as they explain from the other high council members, that they're part of the city, so they back him up, therefore the city can probably back him up as well, technically, but we're not really too sure. Going on to Daenerys, it's very uh, vague about what happens to her. I don't know if these, like, she gets caught by this giant, this huge army, this gigantic army of Indian-like people. I'm not sure if they're the Dothraki or if they're just a whole new race, because I haven't read the books, but, you know, I, I just, I didn't like how inconclusive it was. I should have, you know, shown, like, who these people were, what it was, and whatnot. So I wish there was that for explained, but at least it shows that she's, you know, pseudo-safe and that Drago is just resting now. About Arya Stark, I never really liked her story in throughout this whole season. Probably because I never really liked her as a character. I started to like her in season one, but as the seasons progressed, I started to like her less and less. She became less interesting to me. She became just more of a legitimate psychopath rather than an interesting, you know, character who's been through a lot and who's trying to survive in a world that's dominated by men. She's a little girl who is able to defend herself. She turned into something that I did not want to see in her. And now she's almost like on the levels of Joffrey when it comes to absolute madness. I mean, she's not she's not like Joffrey. Nobody will ever be like Joffrey. Not even uh, not even some of the people that Arya ended up killing. But you know, Arya herself, she grew up in this great 
great world and she was surrounded by people who loved and appreciated her and then all this happens and then now she's just completely transformed. I just don't like the way her character evolution goes and that the fact that she gets blinded kind of surprises me but I can't wait to see what they're going to do with that later on. But still, like her whole arc, I always kind of wanted to skip because I just, always her was back talking and then getting slapped. That was the whole season of her back talking, working, and then getting slapped. And when she finally does what she wants to do, she ends up getting blinded because of it. It's just kind of lame. Excuse me, I was taking a drink. Moving on to Cersei, I'm not going to say much about Cersei other than the fact that, yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of agree with Jeremy Johns on this one. I feel that, you know, she's the worst person in the series. Worse than Joffrey, I, in my opinion. And that although she's a horrible person, I don't think she deserved exactly, like, her revenge should have been different, like, for, towards, for us. I don't know, with the whole walk of shame thing, it's pretty sad, it's pretty hard, it's hard to watch, honestly. But I felt that, you know, it could have been done. I, I wish she would have paid in a different way. Rather than just she walks around naked and gets you know stuff thrown at her. I mean it's awful, it's horrible, but you know, I felt like it wasn't what should have happened to her per se. I feel like they could have done something, you know, make it seem more satisfying that she finally gets what she deserves because she's you know manipulated and tortured everybody in her life that isn't associated with her children, even is associated with her children. She's tortured everybody. It's it's just awful what she does to people. Yeah, all this happens to her, it's awful. And, like, what happens to her in this episode is pretty bad, but, you know, I just feel like it wasn't the right type of thing to do, per se. I wish they could have, you know, kept going with the whole entrapment thing, how she's losing herself. Because when she said she was confessing to her sins and whatnot, like, she even, she even was lying about that thing she did with her cousin, not Jamie. That wasn't right. I felt like she just, yeah, she got out of it, and she got out of it hard, but still, like, she didn't learn a lesson. She didn't do a thing like to you know think about what she's done and whatnot it's it sucks it really sucks moving on to jamie and marcel that whole thing oh god i hate that bitch i hate not marcel but i hate that you know that dorn woman who decided to you know poison marcel and kill her like it's horrible i hate this woman she's root she's like she's like cersei but you're like even more ruthless like she does it on the she does it too for herself she just, she does it herself. She doesn't even let other people do it. She does the work, her work herself. And that's just, man, I, I always did not like her from the first episode. I think, I see nobody talking about her online. I could be wrong, but nobody talks about her this season. And it's just, it's horrible. I, I can, I, I can only imagine that Jamie's, of course, extremely pissed. And I feel like the wheelchair, the, the you know, the leader of Dorne, I feel like he's going to die. I have a feeling that she's going to poison him or he's going to, it's like something's going to happen where he's going to be assassinated and she takes over and that's going to be really bad. Oh my gosh. But whatever happens, I hope she gets what she deserves too. Because you know what? You know, she was all in the wrong. She was completely in the wrong for what she did. And, that, you know, even though the odds, even though everything said that, you know, what happened to Oberell or Oderell, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name, whatever happened to him, like we know what happened to him, that you know, it was fair for the most part in that he, you know, he had it coming, you know, not had it coming to him, but, you know, he should have known this, what was going to happen. It did happen to him, and I feel bad for the guy because I feel like the guy was a genuinely good person, but, you know, it's awful that he died, but it wasn't the Lannister's fault. It wasn't Westeros' fault, and the fact that he ended up, you know, killing one of the most emotional scenes in the series, it just, ah, oh, it hurt. It really hurt. Like I said, this episode hurts you really badly, and it's hard to watch. So I cannot wait for her to finally just, you know, either get killed off or something. Because I, I cannot stand watching her do this and, like, watching her, you know, judgment. We know all these things that she, like, she knows them too. That's the thing. That's what gets me that, you know, it's not that she doesn't know about some certain things. We know as much as she does about Oberell, about Marcel and everything. She knows as much as we know about, you know, everything. And yet she still decides, hey, they're still at fault. I'm going to do this. Like, no, it's not the Lannister's fault, you moron. Mm, it gets to me. It really does. All right. All right. Time to talk about the thing that I did not want to talk about at all, but I have to get into it. Today, I mean, I mean, last night, 
we witnessed the death of one of my favorite characters in the series, the death of Jon Snow. And I was really heartbroken by this. It's really heartbroken. This was so tragic for me because I feel like, you know, he was doing something that nobody else would do. And that's why he died, because he did something that nobody else wanted or would ever think about doing. And it just upsets me how these morons, these old farts, decide that, oh, this isn't part of our tradition, decides to kill him, because even though there's a giant army of zombies ready to attack the wall, like, just because they don't want to mess with the tradition, it's going to be on them when, they, when the wall falls or gets taken over by the White Walkers. That, that's on them now. And I've, I've seen people saying online that Jon Snow will come back, like he'll come back to life because it's, it, 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 kind of, it kind of puts into an idea that this big theory in the books that whoever his, or his mother and his father are mean, make, like it could mean he comes back to life somehow. And there was a hint of people saying that, oh, he's becoming a White Walker, you see at the very, very end. But I don't know. I, I don't see this coming back. If he does come back to life, that's fantastic. If it's either that red, the, you know, the red-headed woman who does the magic from the gods, or if it's the, the many-faced gods, or if it's from, you know, some other magical way, I'd be totally cool with that if, if he comes back to life, because like, he's one of my favorite characters, but they have to, you know, justify it. Don't just say he comes back to life because he's Jon Snow. He got stabbed like 11 times. How do you survive that? <laughs> It was so. It was so sad. Oh my God. I'm. St I'm. I'm almost about to tear up again because, you know, he was doing the right thing. He was trying to create a unity between the wildlings and the uh, watchers on the wall. This is the first time they actually had some sort, some sort of alliance, and then it just gets obliterated because these old farts don't want to mess with you know, and changes to come. Winter is coming. It's coming right now. They're about to you know. Flash winter all down on you, but no, 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 we gotta stick to tradition and killing the wildlings. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see how you act now when uh, Stan Sparathian's dead. You don't have your armies anymore, and that's gonna be up to you and a giant army of zombies. Good luck with that. <laughs> Although I would love to see a massive battle between the White Walkers and that that giant army that Daenerys found in uh, season in episode 10. That'd be awesome. I would love to see how that would work. Oh, and that one battle with Stannis. That one, like he thinks he's like he's sieging on them, and then they come back, and it's like tenfold army just like swarm Stannis' troops, whoom, just like that. Stannis is just done. He's he's even like he's limping and everything. Ah oh, man, it's so you know it's crazy. It really is. And then Brienne shows up, and she's like, hmm, you were you betrayed my you betrayed my uh, old ruler. What do you have to say? And he says, do your duty. And then she almost strikes him. It's, a, it's implied that he actually doesn't die, that he actually may, get, may have to, you know, get help in order to reclaim whatever, but I don't know. If he's dead, he's dead. I, I would totally respect that because he kind of saw it coming. It just, it really surprised me because it was this big hype that Stance Baratheon's coming to take back the North, and yet it uh, doesn't end up happening. Weird. Okay. <laughs> it just, like, comes out of nowhere. But, you know, regardless. Uh, lastly, about Sansa and, uh... Theon Greyjoy, and it happened, and it was, it was, honestly, it was pretty cool watching, like, watching that psychopath bitch, you know, fall off the ledge like that, or be, be pushed off the ledge, like, I think she kind of, she didn't kind of deserve it, but, like, she was kind of crazy, just like Ramsay Snow was, and, uh, I cannot wait to see how Ramsay's gonna react to this, because this is gonna be really good, ah, man, season six is gonna be insane, I cannot wait for what they have in store, uh, that's pretty much all my thoughts about Game of Thrones this season. This has been a, like this episode at least, this has been a pretty good season. It's not, I, I, it's not my least favorite season. It's probably one of the lower ranked ones, I would say. But some of the events that go on are really important, and I like the way they did things. So I can't wait to see more. I need to take a break because, you know, I think we all do after episode 10 and episode 9. Man, those two episodes were so intense. Uh, I want to see what happens to Marjorie. Because, you know, she's still in that prison, technically, and that sucks. So, we'll, we'll figure out what happens to her. Alright, so, uh, got some videos coming soon. And, uh, I'll tell you guys all about that when the videos come out. Because E3 week, can't wait to start doing that. But for now, this is Excalibur, signing out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.